everyone. Today is our monthly Live Your Best Life Bible Study. And today I want to take it from Mark 10. And also I'm going to reference Genesis uh, with Adam and Eve. But I wanted to do Bible study today and center it around our coming up Resurrection Sunday and Easter Sunday. It's not and, it's Resurrection Sunday or Easter Sunday. And I wanted to talk about uh, a couple of things, just revisit our covenant relationship that we have with the Lord. We are in a covenant marriage. And a lot of people don't want to say, I'm married to Jesus because it sounds so uh, fleshly, you know. But the, the the bottom line, it is that we are in a covenant. Um, and Jeremiah, the Lord, was speaking to Israel and stating that I am your husband, you know. And so when I, when I say that in our covenant, that's what I mean. Um, but Mark 11 is talking about marriage and divorce and the Pharisees was approaching Moses in regards to divorce. But that is what I want to talk about today. Let me go in and, and start reading Mark 11 and it's Mark 10 and it's verse five. And let's go before that. Uh, Mark 10 verse two, it says the Pharisees came and asked him, is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife? Testing him. And he answered and said to them, what did Moses command you? They said, Moses permitted a man to write a certificate of divorce and dismiss her. And Jesus answered, this is uh, verse five. Jesus answered and said to them, because of the hardness of the heart, he wrote you this precept. But from the beginning of creation, God made them male and female. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife and the two shall become one flesh so then they are no longer two but one flesh therefore what god has joined together let not man separate what is the lord speaking here because we we hear all the time when people get married oh we have to become one flesh but yes you do one flesh with christ this is what he's talking about because when he said that before the creation of the world he made male and female and he joined them the male and female he was speaking about is adam and eve and adam being a representation of jesus christ and eve being a representation of wisdom which would be the wife it would be somebody you know in a female form and the father and and jesus is speaking here will be representing the father in heaven who is the creation of all things there is a a gospel called the gospel of thomas it's a reference book that they, they did not add into our bible our 66 books of the bible but i stumbled across the gospel of thomas and i read one of the verse and the gospel of thomas is basically what thomas did he wrote all the sayings of jesus christ in his book that he wrote and one of the verse that he spoke about was the uh, five trees of paradise and when i read the five trees of paradise which is the father the patriot uh, the mother the holy spirit the brother jesus um, the sister being wisdom and the child being humanity, which be you and me. And I read that and, he, and it says that if you will understand the five trees of paradise, you will never be defeated. And I did not understand that. So I went to continue to, to meditate on what is Thomas was trying to say, because the five trees of paradise is the totality of who we are in the covenant of Jesus Christ in the covenant of, of the good the christ the body of christ the covenant of you and me individually and so when jesus was talking about before the creation the beginning of the creation god made male and female and for this reason male man shall leave his father which would be the father in heaven okay and mother which would be the holy spirit and be joined to his wife which is wisdom and the two shall become one flesh. What he's talking about the one flesh? Well, the one flesh, because I don't want you to get, well, this is actually gonna help those who are physically married. But when he talks about one flesh, he talks about wisdom being one flesh 
with the word of God. Uh, in the book of Genesis, we, t we remember that Adam and Eve walked in the cool of the day with the Father because they were one. There, there wasn't anything separated. When we talk about the, the five trees of paradise, it was complete in the Garden of Eden. So Adam would be joined to his wife and they became one flesh. The one flesh would be the, the perfection of the word and the perfection of the spirit and the wisdom. They become one flesh. And, and a lot of times we, um, I, I hear people speak about marriage. Well, we're supposed to be complete as individuals before we come to a natural marriage together, which causes you to be one. It's not two halves to come one, is each two people are whole and they become one and they be joined together and they can walk in unity. And this is where miracles happen. This is where uh, uh, a lot of things happen in the favor of God. It's very difficult to be joined in unity when one person is not whole within themselves with the relationship of Jesus Christ, with, relate, with understanding the covenant and, and what God is talking about here. Um, th th it amazes me. There's a scripture in Proverbs, and it talks about, he that findeth the good thing findeth, he that findeth the good thing, he says, he that findeth the wife findeth the good thing. Well, the wife he's speaking about, that Solomon is speaking about in Proverbs, is wisdom. Yes, we, we do think about that. We, yeah, because the, the woman is supposed to be walking in the wisdom of Jesus Christ. That is why I was so confused with that scripture, y'all. It used to just vex me like he didn't find it a good thing. Well, he, the male, is looking for a person that walks in wisdom, whatever it is that they have been assigned to, I guess, in life. Or he sees wisdom that will help guide him, assist him to be compatible with him and his life. And I don't want to get into marriage covenant because I'm not married. But I always like to understand my covenant relationship with Jesus Christ when it becomes one flesh. This is why understanding uh, the covenant of a marriage, our covenant of marriage and covenant with Christ uh, it's so important. So when we do find that mate, that we will already be whole with that and we can just carry that understanding into the physical marriage because it should be one of the same. Uh, the marriage covenant, the physical marriage covenant is a, I, I, I say it's a blessing. It's like a gift because if you're single, we will already be walking in that same type of marriage and covenant spiritually with the Lord as a whole being. Uh, we are approaching Resurrection Sunday, and this is like a revisit. A lot of people don't understand when you give your heart to Christ, this one flesh as being united with wisdom, which is the Holy Spirit, really, uh, you become like this whole person, not lacking anything, not, not longing for anything because he fills you and he completes you. That is one of the great things about the resurrection of Jesus Christ, the crucifixion, is because he causes us to be one in covenant, a blood covenant. And um, I, I want to go more into this, uh, this marriage and divorce. We can't be divorced now because of Jesus Christ. Uh, we're covenant with the blood. It's almost, we're living in the best time right now. It's almost, if you try to divorce right now with Christ, it will be if you take two particles of salt and put it in a container and you says this salt right here is Jesus salt and, and this salt over here is my salt and they're both white and then you mix it together and then someone will come behind you and say, I want you to separate Sonia, your salt and separate Jesus' salt. It will be completely, totally impossible to separate the two because they're both white and they both have been combined together. That is the covenant. When we talk about the blood covenant, that's the blood covenant that you and I have that was taking place at the cross. And so when he talks about having a hard heart, that means you have... Uh, your heart, which belongs to the Father, has now forsaken 
the word of God, forsaken the wisdom of the Lord, forsaken the, I call the five trees of paradise, and no longer want anything to do with the covenant of Jesus Christ. And so when he talks about Moses back in the day, they, Moses, they lived in a time where the law was their covenant. We're living in a time where grace now is our covenant and we combine the two. We understand the law portion and that's what, I believe that's what the marriage, the physical marriage is, is the law. You know, you have the, the contract, it's the legal part, but the most important part is the covenant that we have with Christ Jesus and he abolished the law on the cross. That's what, that, that's what conceals the marriage. That's what conceals the covenant. Um, that's what I want to talk about today. And, uh, I hope I wasn't too, uh, verbal, uh, with, <laughs> with the explanation, but I'm going to go into a little bit more in detail before Sunday, because I want to get into the Bible study today. So you guys have a good day. And remember, stop by our YouTube page if you want to see a more Bible studies and you click on the, the, the Bible study section and it'll take you to other Bible studies that we do monthly. And um, send me a note. Let me know what you think. This is your girl, Sonya Buchanan. Bye.